We have a diagram of the system that makes a hydraulic press work. We have two pistons, one much larger than the other, and there is a hydraulic fluid enclosed between both pistons. The way a hydraulic press works is that a small force is put on the small piston, and because of Pascal's principle, a much larger force is exerted on the larger piston by the hydraulic fluid. Pascal's principle states that a pressure change anywhere in a fluid that can't be compressed is transmitted throughout the fluid, so that exact same change in pressure occurs everywhere in the fluid. Because a change in pressure is proportional to F uh, over A, the force divided by the surface area on which that force acts, then this force to surface area ratio will remain constant throughout the tubing. Therefore, if the surface area of the piston increases, then the force on the large piston increases as well. In a hydraulic press, the larger piston is often oriented upside down and is what exerts the crushing force on objects under the press. In this problem, the cross-sectional area and the force exerted down on the liquid by the small piston is represented by a lowercase or small a and small f since both the force and the area are pretty small, and the area and the force on the other piston here are given as a capital or large A and large F. Part A of the problem asks us to find out what large F, or the force acting down on the large piston, needs to be in order for it to prevent the liquid from moving the piston. In other words, we want a formula to represent the amount of force that will be needed to cancel out the force due to the fluid pressure created by the smaller piston. So let's find a formula to represent the amount of force acting on the large piston. As mentioned earlier, a change in pressure is represented by the force divided by the surface area. Since this ratio is unchanging throughout the tubing, we can set uh, large F over large A as equal to small F over small A. Now we are looking to isolate the large F so let's multiply both sides by the large A so that they cancel out. We now have the large force is equal to the small force multiplied by the larger area divided by the lower area. We're not actually given any variables in this part, so this alone is the formula we would need to calculate to find the large force on the piston. If we had the variables for this function, then we could calculate the amount of force needed to keep the large piston in place. Part B gives us the diameters of the pistons as 3.80 cm and 53.0 cm. We are also told that there is a 20.0 kN force acting down on the large piston. We are to find the force on the small piston needed to balance out the hydraulic lever and make it stationary. First, I've plugged in the diameters into some formulas to calculate the cross-sectional areas for each of the pistons. I used the formula that the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. And in this case, since we're only given the diameters, and the diameter is twice the radius, I have shown both the diameters as being divided by 2 before they're squared. Let's also find a formula for the force on the small piston represented by small f. Looking back at our f over a equals f over a formula, let's multiply both sides by the small a to isolate f, the small f, rather. The formula then becomes uh, small f is equal to the large f times the small a divided by the large a. Plugging all of this into our formula here, uh, we can see that the pi's cancel out, so we can simplify this. And also the, uh, the twos in each of the denominators being squared uh, become four, and they cancel out. So our formula just becomes this. The force times the square of the lower diameter divided by the square of the higher diameter, which gives us a final answer of 103 newtons rounded to three significant figures. Think about the implications of this answer for a second. If we exert just 103 newtons on the small piston, the hydraulic lever converts it into 
thousand newtons on the larger piston. So if you've ever seen videos on YouTube of hydraulic presses crushing things, uh, like on the Hydraulic Press channel, for instance, and you've ever wondered how they're able to exert such incredible amounts of force, now you know the power of hydraulics, thanks to Pascal's principle.